Are you struggling to lose weight and looking for a revolutionary solution? Well, today we're going to talk about Terzipatite or Manjaro, one of the newest medications for actually diabetes, but we've been using it for weight loss with great results. How does Manjaro or Terzipatite stack up against Glutide in regards to weight loss? They do have a couple things in common, and one of those things is how it works. Uh, Semaglutide is a medication that is a, what we call a GLP-1 agonist. So Manjaro also does that and acts on the GLP-1 receptors. One of the things it's going to do is help with insulin, uh, particularly in response to a meal. We have less elevation of our blood sugar and a sh over a shorter time. It also is going to slow down our gut. The benefit of that in regards to weight loss is that it's going to take less food for us to feel full. Another benefit of a GLP-1 medication is that it's going to actually act on the brain to decrease our appetite. So in general, we're going to eat less as well. Now, the difference with Terzipatide or Manjaro is that it has another receptor activity, which is GIP. GIP is going to block another hormone called glucagon that will try to increase your blood sugar. It's also going to enhance the metabolism of fat and in fact, it's also going to increase your metabolism in general. And in fact, it's going to help with your overall metabolism. And also the GIP is also going to impact your appetite as well. So Manjaro is acting on two different receptors. Now, at the time of this video, Manjaro is FDA approved for diabetes and not weight loss. They recently submitted to the FDA to be approved as a weight loss medication and as for fast track. So under normal conditions, that would take two years. Fast track, we expect that to be much sooner. In fact, perhaps the fall or winter of this year. And they did, so part of their submission to the FDA included a large trial where they showed that it was quite beneficial in the weight loss. People lost on average over 20% body weight. And it also has been compared head to head against semaglutide. And again, those trials also show that it was benefit of greater than 20% percent body weight as well. Now that said, is my general the right choice for everyone? Well, maybe, maybe not. So there are some things that make you not such a good candidate for Manjaro. Some of those are what we call contraindications, meaning under no circumstances should you be prescribed this. And then there's also what we call cautions. So the contraindications with Manjaro include if you have a history of medullary thyroid cancer or a family history of that, you should not be taking this medication. Also something called MEN, which is multiple endocrine neoplasia. If you had a history of that or a family history of that, you should not be on this medication. Another contraindication would be pregnancy or breastfeeding. So if you're pregnant, I'm not sure you want to be losing weight, but it's contraindicated in pregnancy also for breastfeeding because we don't know how it is going to affect the baby or if it in fact is in breast milk or not. Those are the major uh, contraindications other than if you have um, a reaction to it or allergy to the medication obviously you should not be taking it then. So some cautions meaning you have to be careful if you take it or decide to move forward and so one of those is if you have a history of pancreatitis. In trials yeah, there was a, a slight increase in the incidence of pancreatitis. If you have a history of pancreatitis you're probably at a higher risk of developing that complication. Also if you have a history of any GI issues particularly with motility. So if you have irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel syndrome, which is essentially really not controlled, or if you have a history of gastroparesis, you definitely want to be cautious if you're considering this medication. Another caution would be uh, depression. So they did notice that in the trials, there was an increased incidence of suicidal thoughts. So if you're someone that has uh, depression that is not well compensated, you uh, may not want to uh, be on this medication either. So those are some of the reasons why you might not want to take uh, terzipatide or Manjaro. Why is a uh, comprehensive weight loss program important for sustained weight loss? Now, medications have been used for a long time in weight loss and they are super helpful to make it easier for you to lose weight. Uh, that said, they are not the only thing if you want to have sustained weight loss. Uh, the other things that need to be part of the program include nutrition, knowing what type of food you should be eating that work for you. Also lifestyle, super important, as well as exercise. Yes, the medications will help you lose weight, 
Nutrition is important so that we don't sabotage our results later, but also that we're eating foods that are going to nourish our bodies and reinforce the changes that we've made. Lifestyle changes are also important, particularly as it relates to sleep. Sleep is probably one of the biggest things. Sleep is vitally important, also managing your stress. All these things are important for weight loss and especially exercise. And exercise is really helpful at maintaining your weight loss among the other benefits you get with weight loss. So if you want to learn more about these other lifestyle exercise, check out this video on the science of weight loss. So not seeing results with Monjero? Well, there might be a few different reasons. The simplest, easiest things I'll talk about first. So one is you're just not on the right dose. And so it's not uncommon. People don't see any changes the first two or three weeks because we're starting at a low dose and we're going up over time. Now, if it's two months and you haven't really lost much weight at all, then we have to look at other reasons. Another reason might be what you're eating. Again, if it's not part of a comprehensive program that includes nutrition, that can definitely be a hindrance to your weight loss. We often underestimate how much we eat in regards to the calories. If you do want to be eating more uh, nutrient-dense foods, but also in the right calorie range. Now, if our nutrition is appropriate, Next thing that to look at is sleep. Sleep is vitally important if we're trying to lose weight. So if we're not getting enough, enough sleep, it's going to be next to impossible to, get, to lose weight. Signs that you may not be getting enough sleep include you don't feel rested when you wake up, or you have the thought of, I can't wait to get back into bed, uh, then you're probably get, not getting enough sleep, or you feel like you need caffeine to make it throughout the day. That's another sign that you're not getting enough sleep. Now, assuming all of those things are A-OK, -okay, you get enough sleep, your nutrition's dialed in, the dose is correct for you. You should look at some blood tests. So not everyone gets blood tests at the beginning of a weight loss journey. And so if you hadn't got that already, this is definitely a time to look at. That'll include a normal blood test that we would get, including looking at your blood count, your liver and kidney function. I would also look at your hormones because that is super important in regards to losing weight and if something's off, it won't make it near impossible. After that, if everything checks out, still you're having issues this is the time we actually have to get fancy so we can look at other stuff including something called metallobol so we can get fancier and look at things such as neurotransmitters those can impact weight loss if they're off another thing is your metabolic profile we can really see if your metabolism is working correctly and it may not be working correctly if there's uh, certain nutrient deficiencies. Another thing to look at is your stool. So with stool testing, we could look at the bacteria, make sure the right bacteria is in there and the wrong bacteria is not there. Also, we can see how you're digesting food, if there are some issues with digestion or with the walls of the intestines. If there's an issue there, that also can impact your weight loss. So those are all the things you can do to troubleshoot if you're having issues losing weight. But the last thing, and so we'll do all those things first, if all those things check out, then you might be in a small percentage of people who are non-responders to this medication and we have to look do and we have to choose something different. So those are some of the important things you should know about Margero Arthrozepatite. This is extraordinary medication and works well with a diet and exercise program. So if you have other questions about this, please comment below. Otherwise, also we do have a, a free course on how to lose weight without starving yourself. Check out the link below and we'll see you next time. Check out one of these videos on weight loss.